All right, my name is Brian Moss, and you are here for class today. We're going to talk to Ronald Wimberly. Everybody give Ronald Wimberly a round of applause, please. <laughs> so we're going to go through the acknowledgments real quick. Uh, Cartoon Crossroads acknowledges the ancient ancestors of the Eastern Woodland tribes, now referring to Adena in Hopewell culture, inhabited by the land in Ohio. Their descendants include living nations of Shawnee, Miami, Wyandotte, Delaware. Uh, we honor and respect the diverse indigenous people connected to this place where we gather. There's one name here I'm going to try walking through, so I apologize if I get it wrong. It's Seneca Cayuga. So I wanted to add that, but just to make sure it was clear, so no disrespect. Thank you to our sponsors, including Greater Columbus Art Council, <clears throat> Ohio Art Council, White Castle, and UBS. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of complicit, right? They're one of our sponsors. I work with them a lot. <laughs> so, okay. So originally, I'm going to give you guys a background about this panel. So my friend Craig was like, yo, Brian, uh, I want you to talk to Wimberly. I said, okay, yeah, cool, cool. That's my buddy. And then they go, on a panel. So I say, okay, let's do it, right? So originally, we we're going to talk about like our artwork together, right? But I felt that was like getting in the way of like actually like our relationship and like how fun it actually is and what we actually talk about all the time. So you guys are like going to be in the back seat of our car while we go through this. Okay, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> so originally, our title was called. Uh, Creating Kinetic Comics, Breaking Anatomy, A Conversation with Ronald Wimberly and Brian Moss. I was like, that doesn't really work too well, right? And then it came to me this morning, and I sent Wimberly a text and like a video. And I was like, the great title for it would be is When the East is in the House, right? By Blase Blah. And so that's the new title, When the East is in the House. So once again, give Ronald Wimberly a round of applause. We didn't do anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Wimberly, how are you, sir? I'm good. Is yeah. this is this close? I have to get like way up on it, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Right. Really? Okay. okay. Cool. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm good. All um, right. Happy to be back in Columbus. Thank you. Familiar faces. Cool. Okay, so what we'll do, um, I'm gonna bore you guys with a little bit of art history. Uh, we'll go through these slides, but what we're going to do is I'm going to explain to you Wimberley's, how I see Wimberley's artwork, right? And then Wimberley's going to say no and tell you what he thinks about it, okay? <laughs> so it should be really fun. So like when I first discovered Wimberley's work, and you'll notice this, you'll, when you pay attention to the work, it's as if a panel, there's so much intention, it reads as a painting, right? I've always felt this way about it. And so I mean, this is, re I'm really compelled by this notion. So when you start with like boring ass art history, right? Um, we start with like the low Renaissance, which is like this really boring on the left side. I call it, we'll call it the mids of the Renaissance, right? <laughs> <laughs> During this time, you know, there's not much food. So there's not much creativity. You need the nourishment, right? But what they would do is these things. Let's see if this little... Okay, yeah, but the cursor works. Okay, so what they would do is these things, right? This, these weird stage-like plays kind of like thing because no one could read. Oh, that's too much of a preview. So you guys, so what happens, it's like no one could read. You know, it's the low renaissance. So everybody performed the Bible like on a stage. That term they refer to as a tableau vivant, right? So it's as if the stage, everyone on stage is engaging with themselves. The audience isn't there. Very traditional, right? And so <clears throat> what happens is that when you get into like the Renaissance, which is what we're familiar with. Wait a minute. I want to. Yeah, yeah. I have, top a, down, I have bro. a quick, a quick. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, Jesus goes into a restaurant for the Last Supper and he says, I need a table for 24. It's <laughs> a rough one. <laughs> so it's a tableau, too. <laughs> So then you have, so then what happens here 
in the in the Renaissance, you get this time period where like they start kind of looking at you like this awkward little baby's doing right here. You see that? <laughs> and then but you start getting like things like special effects. Right. And those kind of things, they kind of break out the form of this staging you see here. Now, this was just my introduction and leave it up to Wimberly to have already done it and like already found it. Right. So Wimberly, with all that, ignore all my tableau and all that pretentious art crap, um, but you can include it. I really feel, I feel it when I see your work. Like this is a perfect example of why I'm talking about what Wimberly does, which is this, like it's inherent to his nature. Like he understands this concept of like a tableau and the staging and the idea of the Renaissance, right? Now you can see that there's not much time spent on it if we just analyze this page. This is from Lab. Um, have you guys read Lab or seen it? Are you guys familiar? Okay, Lab is a book that is by Josh. What's Josh's? O'Neill. O'Neill, yeah. thank you. Well, um, yeah. We put out a newspaper together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's on its how many volumes, Wimberly, sir? Uh, we have three, three papers out right cool. now. Cool, thank you. So this is the first. And this is the introduction to, like, this is the first one, first page. Very riveting, very, it says so much. Now, I'm going to let Wimberly speak, but you can see the idea of what I'm talking about here. And then you have this character. This is complete staging. But you can see the character, does, Wimberly doesn't spend much time in this space because then we break into the idea of depth, right? And this is where we're going to go. We're going to cook soon, so you'll see. Uh, Wimberly, so just tell us, indulge us like how can you come up with something that is a combination of like just even the imagery can you explain just like your process how you come about this idea just if you even if you want to focus just on this first lab image because it's so vivid for us um i'm sampling something mm -hmm. so that work is in dialogue with another work mm -hmm. um the late Godard, he did this film, Alphaville. So in some of the, this cartoon is kind of like a, I mean, the aesthetics for me kind of come from the idea, the concepts. And then some things are gonna like, um, what's the word? They're gonna, they're gonna duplicate. They're gonna show up again through time mm -hmm. because of just like, you know, you're working on top of uh, countless, you know, years of other work and mm -hmm. you're referencing and you're calling back and you're having a conversation with works that existed before. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to ruin it by saying exactly what was in my mind, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, that was a conceit is that this piece is in dialogue with another work. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, if you were to ask me like, what my analysis would be from looking at the work, mm -hmm. not from like thinking about it as I make it. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's personal for you. Yeah, You're involved. Like, I would say <laughs> that the um, the design of it, the look it's referencing kind of like social realism, like Soviet, you know, um, era mm -hmm. uh, works. And <clears throat> it's a bit literally tanky. But um, you'll 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 see kind of like why why that decision if you were to if you were to look at Alphaville and like I'll, that's about all I would say about it. Mm. Right on. <clears throat> yeah. No. Definitely. So and like I said, this is just my introduction. And like I said, I have like literally found like I I, I own this. Is this still in print? By the way, Lab. Just out of curiosity, Wimberly. This one is this one is not. I mean. They're printed. This one is, yeah, okay. it's gone. Yeah. I might have some. Gotcha. But, you know, okay. I, I had some at SPX. I found a box. But, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, officially they don't, yeah, they're it's out of print. print. Okay. So if you want to access this, just go online or see Wimberley today at the signing. Yeah, you're welcome to steal. Like, I know there are plenty of people who are pirating, I think. I hope it's good mm -hmm. enough to pirate. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so hopefully they scanned it in, right? Mm. Okay, so then here we go, guys. This is where I really wanted to get into, actually. Um, so if you guys kind of understand the concept of it now. Now, <clears throat> in this boring old world of art, 
um, there was this movement called the Baroque movement. Now, what happened during that time, uh, you guys probably know it because, well, if you don't, let me just explain it real quick. I guess that would be important. Uh, this, these two pieces are by Caravaggio. Now, what he likes to do, uh, this is like an X composition, but what he did in this Baroque era was uh, you can see everything's now at an angle, right? We have these angles. But what you also notice is now um, they're participating with the audience. So you can now see this right here, right, in this example. Uh, so the idea is now we're not on a stage anymore talking to each other. We're now talking to an audience. We're engaging with the audience. In this Baroque type of art, they always go for this like climax scene, right? It's always about the apex, and it's all about rendering detail, the fidelity of the image, okay? It has to be realistic, right? That's the feeling. Now, <clears throat> a modern day form of this, which we'll see it in, that is very pervasive, is called a Dutch angle, right? So this is the language you guys would know more about, right? Now, Wimberly, <laughs> when I saw Prince of Cats, bro, I was like, man, every panel is like, a freaking painting. And it was like so personal for me, but so visceral that that's like I couldn't I couldn't ignore how I was reading it, right? So Wimberly, uh, we had a few conversations. We talked mm. about uh, problem solving, mm. if you remember. Yeah. Uh, that was a fun conversation. Uh, can you take us back to a moment when you were working? Mm. <clears throat> when you were working on Prince of Cats, and where would something like one of these panels come from? Um, you can either isolate one, or just your thoughts, your vibes, whatever, man. Tell us something, talk to us. Well, I had a formal constraint, so my, uh, my layouts would, I would always use the same, the bottom third or bottom half of the page would rhyme along this scheme, mm -hmm. A, B, A, B, C, C. Mm -hmm. So this page comes at a point where the spreads are matching. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that kind of gave me a constraint wherein it's like, okay, well, the pictures, the time, everything has to fit within this sort of um, constraint. Mm -hmm. Also, sometimes the panels themselves had a uh, rhyme design wise, like so, or maybe even subject wise, like maybe something, if you look, you may see that there's something in this panel that is maybe a joke or rhyming with a panel in that other space prior. Mm -hmm. So all of those things are kind of like um, informing the decisions that I make. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, I, I'm gonna be 100% honest, like I don't remember if there was anything <laughs> like that, um, but <clears throat> what I wanted to do that's me. You're good, bro. Yeah. What I wanted to do was, um, I wanted to just capture like the frenetic, um, just chaos of what was happening, and so I would have kind of like punctuated, you know, periods mm -hmm. in the smaller panels, and then in the larger panels, I would break out and I would kind of show like the, um, like a moment in a static moment in time where everything is happening, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like the smaller panels I would have like, kind of like cuts literally, you know, like uh, reactions. Um, a lot of it is, I guess, um, they're completely different forms, but like it's definitely informed by um, cinema because uh, one of the biggest, I think, aesthetic influences on Prince of Cats were, were like, um, Japanese films, thus all of the you know, mm -hmm. swords yeah. swinging around. <clears throat> what are your thoughts about, um, so you referred to Alphaville in the previous one as well, mm -hmm. um, and then you mentioned film again. <clears throat> now, it's a trope to ask the question, like, ooh, film. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not going to give you guys boring questions, guys. Like, <laughs> we're actually going to go into, like, cool, weird stuff. So it's like, when you think of, like, when you approach it as film, is it fair to say that you could say that about this page right here? Mm -hmm. um, can you explain our conversation um, about the problem solving of this page that you did? Because I think it's a beautiful example of your brilliance and how you apply um, <laughs> technique, um, aesthetics, mm -hmm. 
and making it very dynamic and basically sexy. So tell us about that. I like your use of language. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Flattery gets you everywhere. Um, well, I mean, we were talking about, uh, we were talking about like the role of, I guess, craft and virtuosity in, in making things and how um, sometimes, sometimes like a lack of virtuosity could lead to interesting solutions. And I was saying like how I really respect people who maybe have a lack of virtuosity, but still do like compelling, you know, works of art and picture making and so on and so forth. Um, but this case I, I was citing as like an example where a certain draftsmanship was required, like a certain level of virtuosity, because like, I mean, I could have probably solved it in a less <laughs> like goonish, like muscular way. <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the script was like, well, the script, the script called for two expressions of characters facing each other at the same time and like also described places in the hallway and inside the apartment. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I don't remember how much inside the apartment you get. You don't really get Yeah, anything. you get, you know yeah. he's coming out of yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Oh, you're coming it. out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. coming out of it, right. And um, yeah, when we talked, I, I just remembered the script being like, yo, he described like what was on the bed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, it was either, either, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I was, cause I was kind of heated at the moment. I just felt like, um, it's a pet peeve. Like I love Charles Souls, a nice guy. You know what I mean? And he, he works really hard. But like I was thinking at the time, I was just like, man, I just wish writers would imagine the picture or imagine the shot when they wrote instead of just like writing, you know, an abstract space. Like it's not a it's not a it's not a book, you know, it's not um you are writing a script. Right. You know? You're writing a you're writing a picture. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, I was like, well, and to finesse it, I just like, I said, okay, well, I'm gonna use a, a fish eye lens, you know, or something like that to yeah. show, you know, at least a portion of this guy, um, poorly named Shocker, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, became a problem. Yeah, um, uh, the thing I really like, I think this I is- I didn't color this page. Oh, really? No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> The reason I think this is a great example, and this is to, because everyone has like a practice. I'm assuming a lot of you in here uh, like dabble and draw comics. You know, let's assume that. Um, if not, you maybe should try it. It's kind of fun sometimes. Um, but what happens is that you get these things. They're so challenging because the story, it's like the idea of two characters seeing their faces and being able to co and like convey that is extremely difficult, it's not easy. So Wimberly delivered it here in such a poetic, elegant way that it's a lot of fun. Um, come on in, Craig, you're fine. This is a guy who pulled it all together. Everybody give Craig a round of applause. <laughs> Welcome, buddy. Yeah, but like if it were, say if it were on a, so okay, one of the problems too is like, it's the first page in the comic, right? Yeah. And you have essentially, a shot and counter shot, you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, you have the first shot and then you have this reaction shot, mm -hmm. right? Except it's the first page, like it's a, you know, it's a splash page. Like, so um, unless there's maybe like a mirror behind someone or like, you know what I mean? It's, right. There's a certain, I mean, I guess I could have done over, but then how do we know they're in a hall? You mm -hmm. know, like, and so then that means like in the next page, I'm going to maybe use that information, but right after this, we're in the apartment. You know what I mean? So like, in order for me to give the information, the narrative is like, okay, she's out in the hallway. She's coming into, you know what I mean? Like she's addressing this dude, you know? Yeah. So I wanted to have all of that information as well. And it was in the script. So I had, you know, like, so I had to either, I think a, a maybe a, a creative way of solving that problem would be just like, okay, I'm going to do, and I wouldn't just do like, uh, one shot, A shot, B shot. I probably do like a six panel grid on the first mm -hmm. page and then a splash on the second page or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, it's Marvel Comics. So it's like, what? You know, I'm just, I want to finish the job. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I you want to get back to what you're doing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. No, that's actually a really great example. Um, once this is uploaded on YouTube, go back and like study that because he literally just gave you guys a lot of 
um, storytelling advice in that little nugget right there. Um, okay, so I think we will move on to the next one. So what do you, when we think of like art history, right? Um, we don't really associate it with comics. And so a lot of times what happens is I draw those parallels because those are my interests, right? Um, and this is something that I personally discovered about Wembley's work as I was like developing this and really thinking about it because I'm like, you know what? Like everyone puts my man in the box for like, you know, the swords and the violence and shit like mm -hmm. that, right? And it's like, I really think, and so this is actually, I'll, I'll go back a little bit. Uh, well, last year, Wembley came into town and I was like, oh, how are you feeling? He's like, I'm really happy. I'm happy, right? I'm, I'm happy. And it's like this year, it's the same kind of energy. And so it's very pleasant, right? It's very nice. Not that Wembley's not pleasant. But what happened is that through this, that year and this time, it revealed this other language that Wembley's been speaking the whole time. And what that is, it's this uh, Rococo, right? We know this word because it's kind of trendy again. Mm. Um, but <clears throat> now Wembley probably doesn't even care about this stuff like in the sense of like a rococo like we really have what do you how do you feel about rococo art let me just ask you that mm. let's start there do you even care like does it matter is it relevant to your process um you asking me how i feel about it or is it yeah, relevant feeling, to my yeah process? Not, i don't i don't need your, your knowledge. i think i'm too lazy for rococo first of all like yeah. and i mean as an aesthetic um like i don't know when you go when you're in I, the first thing that comes to mind when i see rococo is just like wow the amount of extracted value that had to create the environment for people to even imagine to make this stuff right the gold the filigree all of that stuff i'm like you know i was kind of into the things that came after when i was um when i was in school like i was kind of into you know like that sort of austrian secession like things that came like kind of yeah. directly mm -hmm. after yeah um awesome. and like yeah no it's cool like it's it's shocking to be able to see someone like wow they made all of that you know, they, they, you know, they carved mm -hmm. all that wood or like they did. And the paintings, not so much. Like, I think they're fun and funny. I think they're funny. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's almost absurd. Yeah, right? it's, abs it's absurd. <laughs> but um, I think there is something with comics. And it's like you hear, like, you'll talk to someone and they'll be like, oh, yeah, we love, we love Toth or Krigstein or whatever. And you're, you'll hear them say that. But then you'll also see, like, people who their work is literally measured by the pound, you know what I mean? Like by the mile, you know what I mean? How much line stuff that they did. Yeah, yeah. And I think definitely as a cartoonist, you think like, or at least, you know, maybe I'm susceptible to it, like peer <laughs> pressure, but like, uh, or not peer pressure, like audience pressure. <laughs> it's like, well, I, this in, in relation to Roco, 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 Roco yep. yeah. mm -hmm. is, um, yeah, like maybe the audience, the audience won't understand um, or appreciate. I think they'll understand it, but they might not appreciate like an elegant solution. But like when people see a lot of work on the page, they immediately they're kind of like, it's like, wow, that person suffered. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is good. That person suffered. Right. I, I always yeah. I always say about that when I see something that's super rendered and everything. Yeah. I always say. Um, they have a lot of time on their hands. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so but I see you're probably thinking more in terms of the um, the uh, the sort of heightened or magical element, mm -hmm. yeah, rather than like the mm -hmm. and like we're I could see how that has. Gonna, yeah, 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 we're gonna get see. there, buddy. Yeah. We're gonna get there. So like when you think of so Rococo, the romantic. Yes, exactly. So do you get the, like, in Rococo, you get the tropes. They're full of tropes, which is, like, a lot of pink. <laughs> a lot of pink, a lot of green, right? It's always going to be whimsical. Now, this actually shows a lot in the same family as, like, um, as Baroque, actually. It's, it's the same thing as Baroque, but just, like, you know, for the book covers, you know, for the romance novels type thing. So what happens in Rococo, it becomes this, like, escapism, a dream world, something that doesn't really exist, but it exists within the page, right? Um, it also invites you in. We still have the inviting element. The rendering and all those attributes carry the same weight as in Baroque, and it actually carries the same compositional flares. So this, you would think this would be the challenging part for me to come with with Wimberley, 
Um, but I would like to do a quick citation up here. If we look at the top here, you'll see this um, artist. This is Kerry James Marshall. This is a guy that Wimberly and I have a lot in common. We talk about him a lot. We love him, respect him. He's a sweetheart. Um, and what you see here, um, <clears throat> Kerry James Marshall created this, I'm, uh, this series of paintings where you see the characters turning, rotating in a circle. Um, and now the reason why this is really important is because as, as black, as African-Americans, as blacks, we don't, this doesn't exist in art history, right? This is, um, and I've seen these paintings in Chicago actually. So the idea of this is a very current form of what Rococo would be if it continued right, what Kerry James Marshall created, and from the tradition. <clears throat> now, I would argue and say Wimberly is doing the same thing, and I love this parallel because a lot of it comes across in these like little nuances. So just right here at this panel, right, with our character, um, can you remind me of her name? I wrote it down, Wimberly, but I just don't have my Where? notes right here in the middle. That's Juliet. Thank you, Juliet. So you can see how we get the same leg arching, right? Now that would be the obvious, right? But then look what Wimberly does here. He changes the perspective even more. Uh, this is cut from a different page, everyone. So this isn't um, together, um, <clears throat> sorry. So when you see something like this, it's still informing, like we have those legs swinging, right? We still have that same, that airy feel. She's sitting out a window, right? Or, and what would we say, out of a window, Wimberly? Oh. Or, yeah. Yeah, they're in the, the, um, the Her bathroom. black room, but okay, yeah. in the bathroom. Now this comes, and now this is from uh, Prince of Cats as well. Um, and we'll get to this image and deconstruct it a little bit later, but you can see, even from when I initially asked Wimberly, like, what's his thoughts? You know, you're talking about the foliage and all those kind of things, these rendered details that are completely unnecessary, right? And you can see how Wimberly handles it, right? Look at how Kerry James Marshall handles it. So I think you there's like this love language, this narrative that's created through artists um, when we go through representation that's actually happening in dialogue. Now, Wimberly, that implication might be very high. That's just how I feel, and that's how I read your work. Now, let's talk about it. What were your thoughts and processes, or just what are your what's your feedback to these kind of notions about your work that I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or what do you think about it? What do you want to tell the audience about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm glad we're having we're just like conversations, yeah, not vibes. about the concepts, which is <laughs> like I appreciate. Yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> I. First, I, I was thinking, like, less pink is more. You know, like, I think one of the the problems, you know, like, it seems like you put a whole bunch on, on it, right? <laughs> this is a lot of pink. Yeah, it's a lot um, of pink. <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a conceptual. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Um, yeah, so, and, like, the colors around it are what make the pink um, kind of louder or, mm -hmm. you know, more powerful. Um, and... Formally, what I was thinking when I did the color and uh, of this book, I was thinking about this um, aesthetic con uh, concept, Shibui, Shibusa, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like, um, uh, I think in effect in, um, in um, pottery, in Japanese pottery, is like you add like a, an, an earth or a gray uh, material to the pigment and it mutes the tones and usually there's like a brighter um and i was thinking about like how that aesthetic concept i was thinking about how that how graffiti like particularly underground or in um areas that have like soil on it or like you know the dust and dirt of things going by all the time has this same quality and um how you will see like all these muted tones um either the original um works have faded or they've been covered by dust and then you'll see where someone's done like a new piece and it'll be bright mm -hmm. and how like if you're in the and i wanted to bring some of that in and i also was thinking about sort of um 80s uh like sneakers like kicks and like the colors that were being used like sort of the 
um, magenta, like the darker, like the maroons, and then like this sort of white, which is like, sometimes we get like the raw, uh, like rubber white, which is like a little bit of an off white, it's mm -hmm. like these muted tones. And then they would, they would use something like a bright kind of a yellow or blue, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what was informing like my color choices in terms of like the, the space and like um, the figures, how they're moving through it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think things happen. Um, like, I don't know what my, I don't know what my great grandfather looked like, you know what I mean? But I probably look like him, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right. So I think there are things like that happening all the time. Um, uh, probably um, the lineage of this sort of stuff. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I can't. I can't call it. Yeah, that's you okay. know. I think your your idea is as valid as mine. Like I, mm -hmm. I don't know where where it comes I, from. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. I did it. <clears throat> yeah. So then, let's check out this this last panel right here. This last page right here <clears throat> from Prince of Cats. I want to talk about um, Wimberly. I kind of want to hand it over to you because mm -hmm. I think it would be exciting for you to talk about this page because I think this is like. I can indulge, just indulge it, right? Because it's like the idea of these combinations of dream, Rococo, love, and then we, um, and then obviously the bottom half uh, continues the, pay, the story. Um, but what are your thoughts? Um, what was the approach? Even would you do something like this in 2022? Like what, do you, what would the approach be today even if you did something like this? Hmm. You know, would you yeah, handle it do, the same? I wouldn't do any of that. <laughs> really? That's surprising. Um, well, I'm working on something right now where it's funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> what you're into isn't necessarily what you do. Mm -hmm. I'm working on something now where um, memory and illusion shows up. And I think... I guess I would think, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, you would just have to wait until I do it. Like, I don't know how I would say like what <laughs> yeah, I would do now. Fine. I wouldn't do that now. Like, I, I was recently talking to someone about this character and like this, this page reminds me of like, sometimes I forget about like how awful of a character I made Tybalt. Mm -hmm. And like this, this, uh, this page reminds me of it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but it, you know. That's it. I guess that's what jumps out to me. But, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. not awful. He's a, he's you know like he's a he's a complex character. Yeah, yeah. Part of that is that he's awful. Right. No, most totally. mostly awful. <laughs> mostly awful character. So I would say so for our, our last um, after this panel we're going to go to questions. Um, so I would say this is a combination, Wimberly, of everything that we talked about um, about how striking your compositions are. Mm -hmm. How your pe how your artwork looks like paintings to me, right? Um, and then also going back to that notion, the what you mentioned earlier, um, we're inserting things narratively. Uh, so I think that's really cool. Maybe from a non temporal approach, like the idea of like taking something from earlier mm. and inserting it later, mm. or even through tradition of like uh, sequential art of like you know, placing static images that show location mm. versus directly narrative associated with our characters. Um, so I think this, these choices you're making here are very intentional and very poetic actually. So what, I, do you see your art as paintings? Let me just ask you that first. Like, do you, am I crazy? Do you see it as paintings? No, I think paintings are paintings. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's reproduction art. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's it's something made to be reproduced. So I wouldn't I wouldn't think of it as a painting. Like, mm -hmm. um, I mean, a, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, what what do I think a painting is? Like, a painting is something that um, I guess I I stand in front of, and like it's right there. The surface is right there. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably as I mean, there are artists that I love that kind of. Um, play with that like I mm -hmm. think you know 
we were just in Pittsburgh and like, you know, Warhol's probably one of the big ones with reproduction mm -hmm. and also with film. Like, you know, if if it's on a wall 24 hours and hardly anything is happening, is mm -hmm. it a painting or is it a film? You know, like mm -hmm. um, the surfaces, you know, you're interacting with the surface. Um, yeah, if it's if it is something that you've made dozens of like mm -hmm. is that is that a painting you know like that's a um, question right <laughs> so i'm in i'm into that like i think you know that's interesting to me i don't think i think lab would be more of i was thinking about it like lab is more of it's a work of art it's not a painting but Ooh. like it, in the sense of like okay well you're composing something and uh the point is to engage with it you know um in a in a non Although the first zero is kind of like, you know, it's full of, mm -hmm. um, well, it's a little heavy handed. Well, what do you think about um, something like in a painting uh, that you can, because you can create narrative out of a painting. But yeah, but this is also, yeah, sure. People, yeah, people do that. But I think mm -hmm. in, I think in narrative painting or in painting, the more, at least what I consider to be real paintings, mm -hmm. um, there's an antagonistic relationship between the materials and like what they're doing and like, the subject like i i don't know if you just look at like you go look at a painting and it's like oh well yeah they're taking jesus off of the cross or whatever right it's like yeah right, that's, that's not what not it's really... that's not like you know yeah sure there's hundreds of them you know right. what i mean like but probably you know for the painter it's like wow hmm, what can i do with this temporary like oh let me uh how can i like we're we talking about like mm -hmm. can, maybe i can get this corpse like so and so hasn't you know like right, yeah, I'm yeah. the I'm the guy who got the corpse yeah, you know like and so now I can, yeah yeah so now I can do this it's like whoa look at you know like he really knows what those muscles look like right? right like so there's a whole bunch of different things that I think are happening in the work that have you know like narrative wise I mean my job is definitely to tell a story I have you know ulterior motives as well but like mm. I think you know that's not you know this is referencing directly printmaking work, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, I think particularly this one's like Hiroshige, you know what I mean? Like his, um, his views of uh, Edo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was thinking about this the whole time, like a lot of the um, ukiyo-e uh, artists that I like, which really informed me, you know, my, my just craft, you know, mm -hmm. um, from being in art school, you know, like there's also like a bit of a, there's like super flat references in there. Like I'm doing a little, you know, the little thing that um, what's his face did from Galaxy Express. Like I'm doing some of his sort of mm -hmm. weird uh, form um, manipulation, like kind of taking things that pass the real to a, a world, a level that's like completely abstract. And I'm referencing like kind of like, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, my um, my aesthetic lineage is the same as probably some kids doing like fan manga, you mm -hmm. know, that are my age, you know, like right. I've, I've had some of the same things, like maybe uh, dictated more by like what was made available to me when I was coming up. But like, that's a lot of what this is. It's just like, it's, um, it's bearing out the sort of, it's bearing out and commenting on uh, the influence of uh, Japan and like Baburu Keki mm -hmm. from like the you know twentieth century mm -hmm. on like a young artist. You yeah. know what I mean? And also kind of commenting on at the same time like what art from like say the nineteenth century, how that was, and you know eighteenth century, nineteenth century how that was influenced by a similar like opening up of mm -hmm. you know borders and trade right exactly you know and distribution yeah 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 so like essentially yeah so like if you if you want to get into the western art of it it's probably like i don't see i don't know like i see i'm just maybe the the latest generation in a sense of like okay so yeah like Van Gogh getting a piece of pottery and it's got like a, you know, um, Yoshi, it's wrapped in a Yoshi Toshi, right? right. It's like, oh shit, I wanna, I like that. Like, I'm gonna put more <laughs> line into my shit, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, Monet, like, oh, okay, he sees the same thing. He's like, oh, right. I'm gonna do that. I'm, you know, like, I wanna do that. And like, 
well, how do, how do I finesse that from where I'm at? And like, how is that talking to my art? So like, not only am I on the shoulders of those artists, and I don't necessarily think of it as painting, but like definitely certain practices, you know? Mm -hmm. Totally. But the same thing is kind of happening to me. You know what I mean? So like, um, and in a way, the violence underneath is also similar. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, um, like, so I think that's probably what's happening there. Like, if you were to ask me, mm -hmm. um, but it's also just like it's there for us. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. When the I'm East is in the house, <laughs> Ronald Wimberly, everybody, yeah. give a round of applause. <laughs> no, I got exactly what I wanted out of you, my friend. Do we have questions? We're going to switch it over to you guys. Does anyone have any questions for Ronald Wimberly? I hope we do. Yes, sir. The uh, modern artists that you're really following right now, get the inspiration from. Like contemporary? Yeah. Um, is there a contemporary artist that I'm really uh, interested in right now? What have I seen recently? Yeah, I don't know. Nothing really comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just, there's so much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anyone else? We'll go over here first. Hmm. I'm sh I'm sure you know. Like I mean, at some point, not specifically. I keep yeah, I keep um, kids' books. You know, I mean, Warhol was a book illustrator exactly yeah. um hopper did some illustration i don't mm -hmm. know if he did in books i think he did mostly advertising mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't know um i guess a lot of the ukiyo-e stuff was i mean it's technically not a book but like it's you know similar to motifs like mm -hmm. kind of you know heroic or ghosts and you know yeah, I don't know. I, I, I suppose so. Like, I don't know. It's funny because up until probably, what, even into the 20th century, all of that art was in dialogue with each other. You know, like they were, they were all, you know, and, you know, artists were doing both. I, I guess I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, not not particularly. I don't I don't, I don't think. Um, there's a book, I don't know if that's an illustrated book. Um, Yamaguchi Akira does some book illustration that I was really into. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions? Any questions? Yes, right here. Yeah, it was weird. Like Prince of Cats, I did write the whole thing because um, there was a, a formal constraint in the writing too. So it was like there was a poetic constraint. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> like a wise ass and to be like, well, you know, I sit in front of my keyboard. I, push the <laughs> I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, um, I guess you have like a problem that you want to solve, right? Like you have a script, you get up in the day, like these characters are going through you know, what they're going through. In this case, there are a lot of different things I'm considering. Again, here, this is like one of the spreads where it's like CC. So like probably what I would do is I'm moving along and I'm like, OK, well, this has to be a spread. It has to be, you know, these certain amount of panels. Um, and like I have to uh, have these certain things in these panels. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. then at the same time i'm thinking about the action this like i'm not sure this is exactly because sometimes you write and then you get on the page and you have like a better idea of how things will be placed you know mm -hmm. so like yeah like those two there's a little bit more space between these normally but like yeah there's um, the my bad way really no that. not at all not at all so like these um like these two panels in the center mm -hmm. is really just a panel but mm -hmm. it's split in two um like, so, yeah, and in this case, it is, I'm kind of relying on the um, the pedals 
to hopefully create a break so that the eye goes in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of things that go into um, that process. Yeah, the process of like, well, um, what do you want the eye to do? Um, how you know, like how much do you care about that? You know, mm-hmm. trying to control that. Um, and so, writing it is drawing it. So like for me, I don't know. I don't, I haven't written for other cartoonists much without providing breakdowns. So like on Gratuitous Ninja, when I was working um, like halfway through, um, I, I got Fred Carrasco to fill in on it. But like I broke down all of those breakdowns. You yeah. know what I mean? Like so mm-hmm. I'll, I'll write, I mean, I, and that's someone you could totally let them yeah let them do their thing yeah. right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um i think now if i were writing for someone yeah i just have to be really explicit about i would be really explicit about um what you're seeing and not so explicit about how you're seeing it but i would have the information in my head like i would mm-hmm. probably imagine a picture and then it's like, you know, what you get back, like people do different things. But like if you, if I put it down, then it means I need to see it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Good. So. I like that. That's great. But and you can read people's scripts. Like people have scripts like, you know, they, they put out that Watchmen. It has like those the rid- back ridiculous. Uh, Detailed notes in the back. Yeah, it's oh ridiculous. God. It's very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> if I look at that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I write my scripts like... Uh, um, what do they call it? Like a, a Harvard outline? Like, okay. Like I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I. <laughs> and then like I'll, I'll go down one tier and then like, you know, the, you know, like say um, I usually do like four, like I use a four act structure, you know what I mean? So like, but then like within that, like you'll have the um, next thing down A, B, C, D, E, those will be pages. And then like I'll have like under there you have panels and then you have dialogue you know what i mean that's how i do it but like and i write i write screenplays as well i i wouldn't write a comic like a screenplay it just um because uh time relates and panels relate in completely different ways i know people like want to think that they're similar i think they're very different oh extremely yeah, different they're very different totally um we have time for one more question i just want to re- be respectful of the next um Thing, event so I just want to make sure I finish early enough for that transition so we have time for one more question anyone have any questions in the middle back yep no right there yep yep no you're fine what are some things that I'm looking to what was the word you used tackle Yeah, because you kind of are in a position of where you could do whatever you want normally, you know. No one's in that position. Really? really? Okay. I mean, no one or everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know, man. Like I um I uh. I'm thinking about history. Like I'm, you know. Thinking about um, like space, like where, what? Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm thinking about history. I'm thinking about like, like how history is constructed. I'm definitely thinking how art functions. Like, can you know what the thing I'm I'm on right now? What I've been thinking about the most is just like the value of art not being any sort of prescriptive thing that it's doing or like kind of you know particular fantasy that it's reproducing for the audience but maybe more just like kind of producing like a or like flirting or seducing people to think or to be critical about any given thing and maybe giving someone the time or giving people the time to kind of like be critical about something, to think deeply about something, to look deeply at something, to like uh, cultivate their eyes and like their ways of seeing. Um, 
I think that's the direction I'm going, like not any particular subject, but the subject that I tend to get into are the things that are immediately around me. And like the, the thing that I'm kind of building on now, it's not, it's a comics, it's a, lots of other things is just like my, my city and like what happens around me, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe like, um, how, like trying to relate and connect to people and the people that you bring around you and like how they, how they're something beyond what you perceive and also like what you project onto them and like what is kind of like what, what you're pulling from yourself and how you relate to them. Mm -hmm. that, I know that's a bunch of, no, no, that's great. But you know what, the, the thing is like that, you know, to tackle, it's like, yeah, you are, I think you go into it with a question and you might, you don't necessarily have any answers. Like think the practice is a, is one of questioning, right? Mm -hmm. I think why, why I felt a little bit kind of bound up recently is because I get bound up or like people talk about block is when it's, is when I'm producing something I already have the answer for. And I'm just like, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like that exciting, like questioning and play is like where the fun comes from for me or like the, you know, it's more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get out of here. All right, let's do it. Everybody give them a really round of applause. <clears throat> Thank you. Appreciate you, brother. Yep. Everybody enjoy CXC.